Hey guys, welcome back. Well, I wanted to share with you my first adventures with Nina's Advanced Sequencer. There are several of these targets, such as the Sculptor Galaxy or the Gordon Nebula. The only way I can image them is to pick them up once they pass the meridian, and then about an hour or so later, they go behind the chimney, so I lose about 30 minutes there, and then I can pick them up after the chimney and follow them down to the horizon. Nina's Advanced Sequencer has a number of very useful features that allow us to control uh, imaging sessions like this where we have an obstruction that we've got to avoid or critical conditions that we've got to take into account. This was my orientation in January of this year. I used a digital angle gauge to reset the camera orientation so that when I collect data here in this month, I'm getting essentially the same orientation with very little stacking artifacts. The digital angle gauge is actually very useful in reestablishing an orientation or a target framing uh, when you have to go back to your data set. All right, let's go over to Stellarium and look at the imaging session that I have planned, and then we'll go into Nina's Advanced Sequencer and show how we implement our imaging plan into the Advanced Sequencer. This is the meridian looking north. The first thing I'm going to do is bring in some more data on the Triangulum Galaxy. As you can see, I have it selected here. Now, of course, as I fast forward here, I'll be taking data in the luminance filter initially, and about two hours in, I'm going to hit the meridian, so there'll be a meridian flip. And then after three hours, I'm going to switch over to the HA filter and take data all the way down until about 2 a.m. when the Gord Nebula will become visible just past the meridian here and if we do a search on it we can find there it is and it comes in at about and this is where Stellarium is very useful we can identify these critical times for example when a given target that we're after is is going to be visible just past the meridian and we're looking at about two o'clock or two o'clock in the morning here and then one hour later I'm getting very close to the chimney and if I just advance this forward, I'll probably start to lose the guider and maybe a piece of the image. So maybe around 310, I want to give up on uh, this target and just go into a wait mode and let the target move on past, completely past the chimney so that I can reestablish contact with it around uh, 330 or so. And then after 330, We'll just follow it down to uh, what is effectively the horizon. And we're already very low, so the altitude here is 21 degrees, and now it's about 12 degrees or so. So once we get down this low, there's really no point in collecting any more data. So let's go over to Nina and load up the advanced sequencer and plan all this out. If you go into the sequencer, this is what you're greeted with. You notice I'm up here in the beta version. I'm, I've uh, had to upgrade and, and move on from the full release version. I'm going to go ahead and go into the advanced sequencer. We have the uh, sequence start area, a sequence end area, and this is where we fill in by dragging and dropping tabs over here into this space to fill out our imaging session. Now just going through here, you can see we have some top level instruction sets. One is a deep sky object sequence. That includes targeting information, the RA and DAC information. And so that's what you would use to, to move to a target and start the imaging process. And then there are parallel instruction sets where when you put the instructions in the instructions are all executed in parallel and a sequential instruction set which is what you would use if you want one instruction to follow the next and not start before the completion of the previous sequence then we have camera options here we have some dome options i don't have a dome so we'll close that down we have the filter wheel flat device we won't be needing that we have commands for the focuser and you see these lightning bolts those are for triggers. For example, wherever you see trigger, and we'll see a couple of instances of this, this is a trigger event. And then we have guider uh, commands. We have loop conditions that we'll be taking advantage of. I don't have a rotator, so I'll turn that off. I don't have a safety monitor, and I won't be using the switch, so we'll turn that off. And then we have uh, scope commands such as park and unpark, slew and center. Those are obviously mainstays of an imaging uh, sequence and then finally some uh, utility functions over here. Let's go ahead and start planning this out. I've switched over to this color scheme just so we can highlight these lines because these lines are going to be very important in making sure you lay out 
your sequence properly. The first thing we do, obviously, when we're, plant, when we're starting an imaging sequence is to cool the camera down. So we could drag and drop that over here. Now you notice this exclamation mark, it means that I'm not connected to the camera. Right now I'm not connected to the scope or camera. We're just doing this planning session within the sequencer and then I'll execute it later on tonight. And I'll be cooling down to a minus 10 and I'll do that over a period of say six minutes. Second thing we'll want to do is scroll down, unpark the scope. So you can see I can just grab it and then wherever I get a an add instruction here is a place where I'm allowed to add the instruction. I don't want to do it here. I want to do it up here. And you see that line appear just below the cool camera. So it's in the start sequence area and just after cooling the camera. So we'll start cooling the camera and then when the camera is cool, we'll unpark the scope and we're ready to go. Likewise, in the image sequence end area, this is one area where we might want to make use of the parallel instruction set. So I'm going to drag it down here. Again, I'm getting feedback that says add instruction here. And I'm going to go ahead and name this end of sequence. Of course, the things we want to do in here are to warm the camera and we want to park the scope. Now the reason you might want to use a parallel sequence here is you want the command to warm the camera and park the scope to happen simultaneously. In other words, you don't want your scope continuing to move, for example, if you're waiting for the camera to warm up. So this is our typical end of sequence task that we have for our imaging sessions. I'm just going to collapse this down. This little tab over here to uh, expand or collapse a set of instructions is actually very useful and it just keeps things organized. So now we've we've cooled the camera, we've unparked the scope, we've warmed the camera and parked the scope. Now we have to bring in the uh, imaging instructions for our two target set that we're going to be pursuing tonight. And for that, since we're tar their targets, we're going to use the deep sky object sequence and I'm just going to bring it in here and drag and drop and I'm going to collapse it for now. Bring in the second one drag and drop and collapse it for now. So this is going to be my triangulum target and this is going to be my SH2308 target and then we'll expand in here for the instructions that are unique to each one of those targets. So let's start with M33. So in M33 we have the target and you can see we have the RA and DEC. It's not populated with the coordinates yet but I'm going to go over to Stellarium and of course we see that we are selected the triangulum galaxy is selected in Stellarium. Go back to Nina and we'll just bring in the coordinates and I'm going to name this target M33 and I'm going to name the target up here M33. So now we have the RA and DEC. Well one of the things that's going to happen right off the bat is that uh, I'm going to pick up the target about here and I'm going to follow it past the meridian. So the first thing I'm going to need to do is put in a trigger to watch out for a meridian flip. Now you see the lightning, you have meridian flip and you have the lightning bolt. So I'm just gonna bring that over here. It says add trigger. You notice it won't tell me, it won't let me add a trigger in a loop condition or an instruction. It's a trigger so it must go up here. It's gonna use the conditions that are identified under options and imaging. And you can see I've got the various uh, parameters here set for the uh, meridian flip. You can see this line here. This is my local horizon. And you can put that in by going to Options General. And then down here you identify the file under Astrometry, the custom horizon. This is exactly the same file that I'm using in Stellarium. So in Stellarium, I've got this cyan line of this uh, of my local horizon that I've measured. It's just a text file of azimuth altitude. And then that same file, you can see it's in the Stellarium directory right here. I just load in that file into this spot here. And so it's exactly the same horizon that I'm using in Stellarium. Now let's go back to the sequencer. Now we have a meridian flip because we know we're going to be performing a meridian flip. And now we need to put in some instructions here to uh, get us to the target and get set up to start doing the imaging. And of course one of the first things we need to do is to slew and center on the target. That goes into an instruction area. We will then change the filter. Make sure that I'm in Lumos. I'm first going to take uh, pictures with the luminance, so I'm going to drop that in here and set that to luminance. And then I'm going to do an autofocus run with my luminance filter. Put that in here and then we'll start guiding. 
Now we can actually start taking pictures. Now in order to do this, I've got it broken down. I'm going to take first take pictures with the luminous filter, and then I'm going to take pictures with the HA filter. So I need a sequence instruction set, and I'm going to call this imaging with luminance. The only thing that's going to happen while I'm imaging with the luminous filter is that the meridian flip is going to occur. I want to image for about three hours with the luminous filter and I'm going to use one of these the smart exposure option here to take many exposures and this will be about a hundred and eight exposures having calculated this out initially already and of course we've already set the filter but in this box use current and that would be fine. I'm going to go ahead and set it to luminance. I'm not going to dither right now so I'll set that to zero and so it's just going to take 108 exposures. Now I do want one trigger. I do want to do an autofocus run at some point in here. And so I'm going to grab the autofocus trigger and move it up to here and have it autofocus after about uh, 50 images. I'm now going to bring in another sequential instruction set. And again, this is where you want to watch out for that maroon line. Where is it appearing? I don't want it here. That would put it in the box with the uh, imaging with the luminous filter. I want it to be in between and you have to mess around with this. There it is. There's a the line and so you can see it's a separate box unto itself but yet still confined within the M33 target box which is what we want. And I'm going to call this imaging with HA. We're going to set a loop condition so that we stop imaging once the Gordon Nebula gets past the meridian. I'm going to loop until time. And here's that add loop condition. And I'm going to put in 210 AM. And so it's going to repeat the instructions in here until 210 rolls around. And so I just want to take an image. So let's collect an exposure here. Now this is going to be with the HA filter. And you notice I haven't set the HA filter yet. So I've got to do that. But I'm going to set the parameters here for my HA filter. And now I need to set this up so that I have the HA filter. I don't want to put this in the loop condition because it's just going to be looping and, and, and applying those instructions every time through the loop. So I want to do this back under here after I've finished up my 108 exposures of the luminance. Instead, I'm going to bring in the switch filter and we'll switch over to the HA here. I will also run an autofocus using the HA filter. And now when I get to the imaging with HA, I have the filter set. I've already done an autofocus and I can just start imaging. But I also want to probably do an autofocus during the time when I'm taking these images with the HA filter. So once again, I'm gonna put in a trigger here to do an autofocus after about 25 images. So this will this will monitor this loop here and whenever it counts up to 25 images it will do an autofocus again keeping and using the uh, the HA filter. And then once 210 rolls around it will stop it will exit this loop condition and we'll move on to the next target. So let's collapse this and we will expand this one and we need to populate the coordinates for the uh, RA and DET coordinates of the SH2308, the Gord Nebula. We'll just go back to Stellarium and look up the Gord. And we can load in the coordinates and I can type in a name for this. Now here I'm not going to have to worry about a meridian flip because I've already picked up this target just after the meridian. And if you look on my horizon here you can see what a challenging target this is for me. I just pick it up right here and then follow it down. There's that chimney. It will go behind the chimney and then set uh, very low on the horizon here. So I have a very brief time uh, to collect data on this target. First thing we want to do is to move on to the target. And I'm going to stop guiding. Then I'm going to slew to the target. And I'm going to switch the filter over to the oxygen filter. Then I'm going to do an autofocus. And then I'll start guiding again. Now you might ask, why am I stopping guiding here? It was guiding before PhD2 knows that when you slew, it just stops guiding and then it picks up where it left off. I don't want it to do that because the first thing that's going to happen is I'm going to slew and center and then Nina is going to want to restart the guiding and it'll go through the process of finding a guide star and settling and that takes some time and 
but then right after that I'm going to switch to a filter and run autofocus which is going to turn off the guiding. I don't want to continue the guiding process, stop it uh, to slew and then start it and then stop it to run the autofocus. I'd rather it just be stopped throughout this period and then start guiding once the autofocus is run so I'm not wasting time with that extra guiding startup bit. Now I'm ready to do some imaging so now I'm going to go back up and grab a sequential instruction set and put it down below here and I will call this imaging before chimney and just to remind ourselves of the process let's bring another one down we'll call this behind chimney and then yet another sequential set that we will call imaging after the chimney and then we just need to fill these things in alright so let's go back to imaging before the chimney and so I want to have a loop condition here loop until the target gets to the chimney which is going to occur at about 310 and at that time we'll want to stop and switch over to what we do when we're behind the chimney but until between the time we pick this target up and the time we get to the edge of the chimney we want to be taking images and so I can scroll up here to the top and pull out a take exposure instruction using my exposure settings for the O3 filter and then it's going to stop and there's not enough time here to do an autofocus it's only going to be here for an hour and then I'm going to go in behind the chimney at 310 or so we're going to be entering into the chimney and then once about 330 rolls around we will be past the chimney and so I may put in one of these utility instructions which is to wait for time 335. Let's go ahead and shut down the guiding before we go into this. So we'll stop guiding here. Then we'll wait for a time. And then because I will have stopped guiding, I will have drifted somewhat off of the target. So I will want to do a recenter on the target. And then once we do that, I will pick guiding back up. By this time of night, the temperatures have kind of settled down and they're not changing as fast, so I'm not expecting to have lost much from folk. I'm not going to do an autofocus run. And then that handles everything we need when we're behind the chimney. We just want to stop guiding. We want to coast a while, waiting for a 335 when we're on the other side of the chimney. Then I'll recenter on the target and we'll start guiding again and then finally we want to do what imaging we're interested in after passing the chimney and in this case we'll have a loop condition where we will loop until altitude sets below we'll put that here I'm going to go ahead and use 12 degrees it's very low on the horizon and I will continue to take images until the altitude gets below 12 degrees and at 12 degrees it will exit this condition it will exit this target and it will go into our end of sequence instructions which was to warm the camera and to park the scope and so there you have it as you can see it's a fairly logical layout of exactly the steps we need to follow when we're doing a, an imaging session if we were there pressing the buttons ourselves with these expandable and collapsible tabs we can easily get a top level view of what it is that we're doing and break things down into bite-sized pieces that's how we use the advanced sequencer and then we can just save this December 12th 2021 we're good to go and then tonight when I start things back up I'll just load in this set and then I'll be on to imaging starting at 6 30. You don't necessarily need the advanced sequencer I've gotten by just fine without it for a long time and most of my imaging tasks don't require the advanced sequencer. There are situations that you can get into where you can have some particularly challenging DSOs that go behind some obstruction or you have to wait till they're above some horizon level or altitude level and you just want a little bit more finer control of your imaging session and that's where these more detailed instruction sets come in handy with the advanced sequencer that's a current version of Nina. Functions like uh, loop until the target gets to the meridian for example or loop until a specific time or loop until the altitude of the target goes below a certain angle. There's lots of very useful uh, instructions that we can call on to handle these occasional challenging targets. I use Stellarium all the time with a good
good definition of the local horizon, you can kind of plan out when those critical times occur. So I've been using this advanced sequencer for several nights now, and I haven't had any issues whatsoever. It's been working very well. The features in the advanced sequencer in the beta version were just too compelling, and I had to take the jump. And I'm glad I did. It's working great. So I guess that's all I have for now, guys. I'll see you later, and clear skies. Thanks for listening.